Today we're going to take a look at understanding conditions in our program. I have a little program here that I've created that's going to help us to evaluate the difference between using multiple if statements versus using if and else if statements. One of the things we have to consider is what is the difference between using multiple if statements? Um, are there pros, are there cons to using them? And they do have their place, but we do have to understand what is actually occurring before we go any further and write our code for our program. So one of the first things I wanna look at is what is multiple if statements and how does it affect your program? When you go ahead and use multiple if statements in your program, each condition that you write is being evaluated separately. So therefore, if any of those if conditions are correct, they may be executed within your program. However, if we use an if else if statement, the second condition is only going to be evaluated if the first condition is false. And that's going to continue down the line. Um, if we have a third condition, the third condition will only be executed if condition one and condition two are not met until we get to the end of our program. So we have to really look at what are the benefits. A lot of times I see a lot of my students writing multiple if statements and they're having multiple conditions uh, being uh, executed in their program. And that causes some bugs that they don't want to see. So looking at my first example here, what we're going to look at is I've created three different event handlers. I've created an on button AB press. And what that basically is going to do is it's going to set our variable, which is a test score. And we're going to program that test score to pick a random number anywhere from 50 to 100. So think of this as a grade on an assessment. When the test score is selected, that variable can have a low range of 50 to a high of 100 and anything in between. It'll also show us what that test score is when we press the AB button. Now, once we set that test score variable, we're going to look at two different event handlers. The first one's going to be an on A button press. And what that on A button press is going to run us through a program that uses if else if statements. We also threw an else in there so that we can see our final outcome. So looking at the flow chart, when the button A is pressed, if the test score variable is greater to or equal to 90, it's going to show us fantastic and then pause for 100 milliseconds. After that, it's going to skip over my else if statement, skip over the else statement, and go back to the beginning to that on A button press. However, what if the test score is set to 80? If our test score is set to 80 and we hit the A button again, it's going to check my condition if the test score is greater or equal to 90. If that is no longer true, it will now look at evaluating the second condition in our program. In this case, my second condition is an else if statement. So therefore, if the test score variable is greater to or equal to 60, it's going to show a string of you passed and then pause again, and it will then skip over my else statement. So each one of these conditions is being executed separately. No two of these can be accurate at any time when using if and else if statements. If my if statement is true, it's going to go back and wait for me to press the A button again. If the else if is true, then my if statement must be false and the else statement must not be read, and so on and so forth. The third event handler that we're going to look at is the same program, but instead of using if, else if, and else statements, we're going to go ahead and look at using three multiple if statements. So the same thing with our flow chart. If the test score is greater to or equal to 90, we'll see fantastic. If the test score is greater to or equal to 60, we'll see you passed. And if the test score is less than 60, you will see you failed. Now from this, what we're going to kind of look at is what happens if our test score is greater to or equal to 90? When we see that, we're going to look at our first condition. In this case, what you are going to see is that because the test score is greater to or equal to 90, my first condition is going to be a true statement. Because that's a true statement, we will see the word fantastic scroll across the screen. However, after this condition is read, it will no longer skip my other two if statements and go back to my event handler. What it will do is now check the second condition to see if that one is also true. And because 90 is greater to greater than 60, we will also see the string you passed. So in this case, we have two conditions that can actually be met. 
and we will see both of those results on the actual microbit screen or on our emulator. So taking a look at these, we're going to jump over to make code. And here you can see I already have the program placed in there. We call the conditionals. And you can see that we have this first event handler. With my first event handler, we're first setting my variable, which is the test score, to pick a random number of 50 to 100. That is going to show the number of our test score. So if I hit the AB button on my emulator, you're going to see that we get a result of 94. Now that's a perfect example for, for this demonstration. So right now we've set that variable. So anytime we call test score throughout our program, we should have 94 locked in. So if I push the A button, it's going to check my conditions, if, else if, and else statements. If my if statement is true, which it is, it's greater than 90, we're going to see the word fantastic scroll across the screen, and it's going to ignore my else if and else statements. Because my first condition is true, we should see just the word fantastic scroll across the screen. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. And there you go. So we should see fantastic. And after that ends, we're just going to see a blank screen and we're going to sit here and kind of wait and see, does anything else show up? And in this case, that's it. We're done. So it's executed the first condition in my event handler. And because the others are an else if and an else statement, it is going to ignore them. Now, if we do the same thing and we take a look at my on B button pressed, our variable test score is still 94. So if it is greater than 90, we should see fantastic. That is a true statement. But we also have a second if statement, which is if the test score is greater than 60. And we do know that 94 is greater than 60. So we should also see you pass scroll across the screen. The third condition is if it is less than 60. Well, we know that that is not a true statement. So we should not see you fail come across the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the B button here. And we should see the word fantastic scroll like we did with event handler A. But after about a second here, what we should see now is the second condition being evaluated. And you passed should scroll across the screen as well. So here you can see it's not only executing my first condition, but it is also executing the second condition where it did not do that in my first demonstration with the A button pressed. So let's go ahead and try and reset the variable. We're going to hit the AB button, and here you can see we have the number 74. So in this case, if we hit the A button, we should see you passed because the first if condition is no longer true. So because my first if condition is no longer true, we're going to go ahead and evaluate the second condition in that program, which is an else if. And then from there, we're going to go back up to the A button. Now, the same thing will happen when the A, uh, sorry, when the B button is pressed because 64 or 74 is not greater than 90. So it's only going to evaluate that second condition, which is a true statement. It will check the first and third, but neither of them are actually true in that case. Now we can go ahead and let's manipulate this a little bit. Let's go ahead and say if it selects a number between 50 and 60, that'll kind of give us our else statement so we can see how that actually works here. When we hit the AB button, you're going to see we get a number of 56 locked in. So here, when I hit the A button, what my program is going to do is it's going to check my first condition. Is it greater than 90? No. The else if, is it greater than 60? No. Now it will only run my else statement. So again, hitting the A button will only run the you failed or my else statement part of the program. My B button is going to do the same exact thing here. So the main thing we have to kind of keep in mind as we're doing this is when we are using if statements, multiple if statements, your program is going to evaluate each specific uh, event or condition that is set in your program. Whereas when you're using an if and an else if, it will only evaluate the first condition. If that condition is met, it will not evaluate the remaining conditions in your event handler. If that condition is false, only then will it move to the next condition. And that will continue until we reach the end of your program.